Hello. Well, here I am to talk about the third installment, the final installment in the sixth installment of the Star Wars saga. So, it was the final installment of the Star Wars saga for the longest time, but it's not anymore, but you know, whatever. The original Star Wars saga, the trilogy, and the George Lucas saga, I guess you could say, it's the last one because, you know, episode 5 and 6, he didn't direct those films, but he was very much involved in behind the scenes and helped shape them to get to where they are now. Um, and obviously, the film to talk about today is Star Wars Episode Six: Return of the Jedi. Um, I made a video about this and how essentially it's in defense of this film because a lot of people don't give it the credit it deserves. I went through many of the points that people talked about. On that aspect, I'm not gonna bring all that up again. In the dis in the comments, the pinned comment will be that video. I will be sure to get that uh, uh, for you, because uh, I'm going to put in the cards the previous uh, retrospective of a Star Wars saga that I've done. So, there you go. So, hopefully, you might like that. Um, maybe you won't. I don't know. Um, but uh, I love this film. It is a great conclusion to the trilogy, original trilogy, and the saga overall. I think this was a great place to end it. I never really thought of more films after it, personally, but, you know, that's what. whatever. Um... You know, it's just the way this film ends is very final, very conclusive. Um, and I just love it very much. I think it's an incredible film. It, it just closes out th everything just so well. That aspect alone sort of, to me, kind of makes, it ranks it with uh, episode 5 being tight as my favorite film in this series ties everything up whereas in it and there's a happy ending I know some say originally it was supposed to be a bit bleaker or darker because you know Luke was supposed to just walk off into the sunset where I guess everyone else is happy but not for him I guess not, not too many details are known much but that was just how it was originally pitched, I guess. Or at least really the idea was thrown about. Was, again, Lucas wrote a 250-300 page script. Laid out the entire story of Star Wars, and he basically made it with this trilogy. I'm sure some stuff here in the beginning, kind of remnants of the prequels, were born and were there, but that would be fleshed out later when he actually sat down to flesh it all out after this trilogy was there, um, it was already exi exists, and um, Lucas, I'm sure early on, you know, he considered various, various options, but, you know, he wanted to follow that story he created all those years ago, which was the foundation that the story of Star Wars was based on. And um, Lawrence Kasdan helped him write the script based off of his story. Again. And uh, Richard Marquand is the director. Um, again, like uh, Empire, Lucas was involved behind the scenes quite a bit. Um, not as much on Empire, but there are a decent amount of pictures, a good amount of pictures of him on set. 
like on off and stuff and uh, uh, actors and stuff to like just to see how things are going and making sure things are running s fairly smoothly. Empire not so much. Uh, occasionally sort of like a new hope. But here things were a bit smoothly. Then again you had two films under their belt like from uh, a special effects standpoint uh, as well as most of the cr essentially the most of the crew was back for uh, episode six Return of the Jedi. So I think at that point everyone sort of you knew what we're doing, even though the directors weren't the same on each one, they kept getting different. Though George Lucas was there, uh, that was a pretty much constant. With this film, we finally get to see the Emperor, who, played by Ian McDermott, is incredible. Uh, I mentioned before, in the previous video he, was, he filmed new stuff for... The uh, special edition dealt with continuity. Um, with the special edition here, I don't, you know, there's. Episode 5 didn't have much changed. There's some things that were done a bit different, but here the big thing, stuff at pa the palace was changed. Um, and uh, the, with the CGI dance and stuff. We've seen inside the Rancor pit and all that, and with the actress who looked exactly, essentially the same as she did first time she showed up on set and did a great job. Um, yeah, she uh, she did a great job, but. Many people aren't too fond of some of the uh, changes. Uh, also, the Sarlacc pit you now has a beak. Some aren't fond of that. Um, I don't know. To me, the, these changes in the in this original trilogy do not really bother me. Uh, I just, you know, when I rewatch these films. They don't really pull me out of the film. They're not things that really detract from the story. Now, if any of these changes did that for me, then I would have I'd complain. But they don't really do anything. Um, they might not necessarily enrich the story, yet they don't de detract from the story. It's, the story is never derailed. What happens is a on a constant basis, and it's, or at least it continues to go. And I don't, it goes how it's supposed to from beginning to end, and it also wraps up the trilogy. And for this film, Empire, again, not much is done, changing wise. A New Hope. Yeah, you have Jabba, who we finally see in this film for the first time, theatrically wise. Theatrical wise, but chronologically, no. But he's a big green slug, disgusting, and yeah. Um, he's very much someone who. Uh, you know, he's a gangster and he's a bad guy, and yet. I don't know. It's a, uh, Jabba was always an interesting character. He always intrigued me. Oh. How he and his, like, in the huts, how they got, you know, how they got, gained their power in the galaxy, and why many fear them, and many aren't really intimidated about them, but they respect them, and all that, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's very, it's very interesting. Obviously, you know, there's books and stuff of how all that happened, but... There is a mystery of Jabba. There's some characters who are quite mysterious. And I think that's a good thing. I think mystery helps. Um, some of the stuff that Disney had explained is fine. But there are certain characters like Jabba and Obi-Wan 
who's in this film again? Uh, Alec Guinness, like, filmed a day of shooting, and, um, yeah. Uh, he gives it his all, as he often does. Um, James Earl Jones got credit for the first time voicing Darth Vader. It's just always Dar uh, David Prowse before. And, uh, because... He, uh, Jones didn't think his contribution to voicing Vader in 4 and 5 was good enough to get a credit, even though I'm not sure why, but I don't know. Maybe it's the end when you watch the whole film, and I guess his contribution is, in a way, fairly small in terms of just, uh, like, like, he stood in a booth and read his lines, but he did so, so well, nobody else could the voiced Vader, like him. Um, yeah, it's it's. He, he he's. Yeah, yeah, James Earl Jones is awesome. Mark Hamill is incredible too. I mean, the performances all the way through, this trilogy are fantastic. Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, Peter Mayhew. David Prowse, even though we never hear him talk, but his, uh, just his performance in the suit is great. Ian McDermott as the Emperor is incredible. Or to uh, Kenny Baker, uh, Anthony Daniels, they're great as R2 and C-3PO. <laughs> Frank Oz again comes back briefly. Sebastian Shaw is at the end of Return of the Jedi as Anakin Skywalker. Though now, in the special editions, as Hayden Christensen's head on his body, uh, done to help with the continuity. Though some do say, well, how does that work? You know, he became Vader became good at the end. He was Anakin. Vader was dead when he when he picked up the Emperor, threw him down the shaft, while also being electrocuted, thus essentially sacrificing himself for his son. And he died, and he became good again. Uh, he was redeemed. Which is another reason I love this film. It's incredible. The redemption of uh, Vader, and seeing Luke become a Jedi night now, going from not knowing who, what a Jedi was to learning what a Jedi is, or was, and then big training and a little bit in four, and then in five, training more, and now, a year later after, doing a lot of things and helping out his friends and all that, comes, he's now a Jedi. Doesn't want to kill his father. It was confirmed Vader is his father. Even though that's what Luke and or Obi Wan and Yoda want Luke to do, he can't kill his father. Even though the members of Club the Emperor's won, then only you could have killed Vader and then him. Even though you know, because he thought all hope was lost with for Vader, that Anakin was completely dead and could never come back. Well, he does. You know, and in some way, it's Luke that sort of helps, you know, bring balance to the Force by not killing the Emperor when he could have, at any moment, after disarming his father, after cutting off his hand, and he could have easily killed the Emperor, but he didn't. And, uh, but a true Jedi would be, he's not going to just kill someone like that, he's, he'll never turn to the dark side, and then he's about to die, but his father saves him, and then thus redeems himself in doing so, and then also brings balance to the Force, and then uh, brings that prophecy with the prequels uh, true. And while people do complain about that, so all that happens in, uh, like, 
how does that make sense when he redeemed himself and is now good? Well, apparently George Lucas thought it's when Anakin was last truly good before return, going to the dark side is how he should be. But of course, the prequels did not exist, so that would make total sense to have. Uh, yeah, back in Return of the Jedi being made. Well, here's here's Buck, you know, here's this guy we've never met, but here, here he is, and he's going to be That, uh, his, he's going to be Anakin later when we do the prequels. That would make sense. Um, I see the logic there, but I also see how people are like, well, he became good, though, at the end of the film, so he should still be the old, that old man. Uh, though he was bald and all that stuff. Have that hair, which is interesting to see, but, you know, uh, Regardless where you are on that, I just try to explain all that to the best of my ability. You know, it's... Yeah. Um, and I believe I've touched on this a bit before in, that, in defense of Return of the Jedi, but... Again, I'd never thought... Uh, when Luke essentially tells Leia their siblings... When Leia is talking about her mom, I've always seen it as her adoptive mom, because there's nothing to indicate uh, that indicates she's talking about Padme. And I know there's stuff like in books like oh, or in other things like oh, she felt the Force told her who Padme was, never told Luke who their mother was. They told her, hit her, and the Force works differently for others. And you know, all that's you know, true. At the same time, it's not too hard to believe Bail Organa's wife was also a kind woman who had said and then died when she was quite young, maybe five or six. We don't know much about his wife. Um, you know, they were on Alderaan, and, you know, so she's a princess, essentially, uh, he became king pretty much at some point, her queen. She passed away. Uh, her adoptive mom passed away, and then he, uh, you know, he, uh, they just raised, he raised her to, the, to be what she was. Raised her to be who she was. She became, and um, you know, Princess Leia, and she kept that title all the way through the trilogy fighting for uh, the galaxy against the Empire and alongside with her now brother and uh, her new love interest Han Solo and Chewbacca everybody um, but that's my thought uh, there's just never been enough for me to conclude She's talking about Padme. Uh, I never thought she was talking about Padme, even though it was like, you know, she was happy, caring, and all that good stuff, and sad at the end because Anakin turned to the dark side. That would make sense with what she says in Return of the Jedi, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I haven't uh, heard the commentary for Return of the Jedi in a long time, so I can't recall if George Lucas in the commentary says that was a reference to Padme, though if it is, I want to guess that would be, there you go, but it's odd, like, how, how does that, how does that make complete sense, I don't know. Seems more likely that that's her adoptive mother she's talking about, and then Luke has no memory of his mom, which makes sense. Only uh, parent he ever encountered was his dad, and that's Darth Vader. Um, 
But yes. Uh, I love Return of the Jedi. Fantastic film. Fantastic end of the trilogy. And the saga. Again, not too thrilled with the new films that continue. But uh, I've already talked about those. And uh, I'm sure I will talk about episode 9 when it comes out. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this retrospective of the six Star Wars films that I truly love, grew up with. Um, I know at some points I kind of go on this and that, but basically sometimes it's like my excitement for these movies kind of, you know, it just, it just kind of goes like when... Uh, Star Wars really is that franchise and films that just see it. Just see Star Wars. Words, in a way, can't do them justice. Uh, with the prequels, you know, it's sort of like, gotta ex sort of explain more, uh, unfortunately. But, you know, that's how that is. Uh, I just love. these films, I love this trilogy, I love the prequel trilogy, I love the saga. George Lucas created something incredible, got those involved to help execute his the visions that he saw for these films, even if he wasn't in the director's chair, got directors he liked, admired, and respected, and worked with them to help craft these films, and um, I'm happy. I'm happy he did that. I'm happy to rewatch these films over and over again. Um, what do you think? Do you enjoy Return of the Jedi? Do you love it? Do you n not love it so much? What do you think? Um, you can definitely leave your comments below with what you think about this film and the saga itself. So, yeah, it's really all I got to say at the moment. Um, so, until next time, hope you all have a good day, have a good week, have a good weekend. Um, and, yeah, see you all next time. Bye.